There, now we're on record. I want to know where to press. The silver button, but don't touch it. I've got it on record now. Oh. Okay, so... The silver I, is the back? Yes, honey, it's already recording. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, well, Lord, I don't know anything about these This things. is why my YouTube channel is a professional <laughs> channel. I got Mom to come over and help me film this. I haven't told you all that I was trying to hatch some quail eggs because I've had such bad luck this year with eggs hatching. And I was trying to get your finger out of the way uh -huh. in case it was in. But I went over and thought there was a mouse in my hatcher because it was underneath the grate. And uh, if you can, I'm going to get it around here so you can see it. This had hatched out and was underneath <laughs> the grate. But we've got it now. Look how tiny. <laughs> and that's the cutest thing you've ever seen. Oh, oh. So, yeah, there I am. I hatched out one quail. And I can see the others hatching also. So we're going to put this one back where it'll be warm and let the rest of them hatch, and I'll show you more later. So 17 days was correct. There's, there's my filmographer there. <laughs> Mom just had her hair done, isn't it pretty? Look, yes, it is. And this is... Uh, <laughs> this is my, my, my newest acquisition here is the fortune teller. The reason I got that is because she looks like my daughter. And she has my daughter's hands and fingernails. <laughs> That's a fun thing. You should hear her cackle and scream. I've got her turned off. Oh, it's yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, she came in broken. She came in with one eye not working. I, I wish they both worked, but it, I didn't want to send her back because she was such a great little gift, and I like her. I love her so much. She's super duper. <laughs> Happy Halloween. <laughs> Hi, guys. A little update. It's uh, three days after hatching. We've got two really healthy ones, and there's our little guy we had to help out. I mean, I think he's just living on yolk sack. He's... Uh, got a little gimpy walk. His one foot was a little deformed. Yeah. And he just can't get around real well. I don't have a lot of hopes, guys. When they can't hatch like that, there's always something wrong. There's an update on the two babies. What are we now? Five days old? And we're already getting feathers and acting like big quail. <laughs> Here, give you a hand. Come here, Goldie. Oh my goodness. Come here, Brownie. <laughs> As you can see, we have grown a lot. <laughs> and we're wiggly. Oh, all right. Go back under your warmer. Just about every night, I put half a piece of baloney in, set it, and I get up in the morning and the trap is set off. Baloney's gone. Baloney's gone. How you like the hair? Good morning. <laughs> uh, this is just an ongoing theme in the war against the whatever was eating the quail. And the quail are still in the house. Nice and safe. Say good morning, Sally. <laughs> still alive, girl. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I have to keep them in here. Even though they're not the, uh, well non-stinkiest companions in the world. Oh, Sally, do I need to do the thing for you? I think they can get water. I made this. I think they can get water out of here, but I reach in every once in a while, move it to the side and fill it up. And that way, they can stick their little faces in there and get better drinks. There you go. <laughs> They're so stinking cute. There's probably an egg in here somewhere. I'll look for it later. Second day trap is open, bait is gone. Uh, either the trap is set too heavy, or that is one clever raccoon. Right, girls? Fatty Patty? That's right. I just fed you guys, and you want more. Heavens. And we still have what we have left of the quail. I think there's ten left now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yep. And they're all in here because every time I put them out, something eats one. 
What? We've all dug holes now and we're taking naps? And Sally, I think you're diabetic. She drinks a lot of water. Yes, you do. So the, the fight goes on, guys. I wanted to stop and thank you all for your donations on my PayPal. So many of you. I said $2 only, and a lot of you donated a lot more. And I'm hanging on to it because I've got to get this critter that's coming over and killing the quail before I can ever put them back out. Um, I'm kind of at the point now, I'm thinking about getting a shed uh, to put them in that will open up during the day and then close them up at night. And I'm getting a little suspicious. You know that one wild cat I have left? Might be her because I saw her jump up in my bedroom window the other day and get a bird. So, uh, yeah, little concerned that it might be her. Even though I feed her, she shouldn't be that hungry. But a shed might be appropriate for keeping them in. In the meantime, I'll just keep them in the house. What the heck? And what did I do? What did I do? I started some more eggs to hatch. <laughs> They're just so stinking cute, those little ones. And it's something to do. And tomorrow, well, tonight Mom and I head up to the motel to spend the night. Uh, we get a free room every month. And then we're going to be going back to the hospital. That three weeks rolls around so fast, guys. You, know, you have to go up every three weeks to get infusions for the cancer. And sometimes I just want to quit. You know, my son says, well, maybe one day it'll be over. And I said, no, it's a ride or die situation. You, you do it or you die. So, so far it's keeping the cancer from growing. The wind is blowing. I hope that's not affecting my sound. And um, I guess that's the best we can hope for. And I just want to stay around a while longer to take care of my chickens. And I want to thank everyone so much for your love and support. And yes, the donations. And my best friend, Terry, who sent me the most wonderful chicken shirt that I've had on for three days. So I don't have it on right now. <laughs> and I have one that Mom bought me that said, I speak foul language. Or I speak in foul language and I can't find it. I'd be wearing that to the hospital tomorrow if I could find it. But uh, yeah, and the hair is still curly. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I was told if I cut it and you cut the chemo curls off that it'll be straight. And I thought, no, I kind of like the chemo curls, so just let it grow and we'll see what happens there. All right, guys, I have got to get ready. I promised Mom I'd pick her up this afternoon. I get so depressed the day before I have to go there, <laughs> and I can't sleep at night. Ah, it's just a nightmare. But I did want to thank everybody for the donations and everything and how much I really appreciate it. Especially since my lift chair just broke. So we're going to talk to the doctors. Maybe I can get a, a, a script or something to get another lift chair because that sure does help when you have uh, the infusions and stuff. It kind, of, it kind of makes you weak for a day or two. And um, with the hips and everything, well, you know, anything you can do to struggle along. So I'll talk to you all later. Just keep on going. I love y'all. Bye-bye. Morning, ladies. Yeah, I can't let you out today. You know why? Because I have to go to the hospital tonight and tomorrow get infusions. Yeah, so you have to stay in. But that's okay. You'll be fine, Helen. I'm sorry. They never like it. <laughs> the day before infusion, we have to go up early. Hello, Marshall. I know, hon. Look how big Marshall's getting. Now, comment below if you think that is a miniature <laughs> Beltsville white turkey. I think I got ripped off on eBay. Uh, that's about as miniature as my rear end. That's right. That is not miniature. But the chickens I got with him are beautiful. I let Marshall out the other day. Tell him what happened, Scud. Okay. He got lost. <laughs> he was in the corner in the yard out front. We found him. Scud found him. Scud, you leave the roosters alone. You know. We never let the ladies... Oh, great, guys. Look what you did. They laid their eggs back there in the corner of the little house that's in there. Guess what grandma can't do? Reach the ground. Oh, you little smarties. Yes, you. All right, friendly.
I'm going to have to go get my picker upper and try to get those. My, my new girl, Maggie, her husband came over and cut that limb down, the neighbor's tree that fell in my yard. I was so grateful. And then the next day, after waiting a month, the neighbors came and they cut the rest of the limb off of their side. And they promised me they're going to get these two dead trees. They're huge. And they're leaning towards me. That they're going to get somebody to take those down. So, uh, hope we don't have a big storm and they fall on top of Marshall. <laughs> Fingers crossed that doesn't happen. Yes, Scudley. What? What are you eating? Don't eat nasty stuff in the yard. What are you eating? Weirdo. Isn't he beautiful? <laughs> That's my boy. Yes, you're a pretty boy. This is how I think you like him better than me. Nope, you're 17 years old. I've had you a lot longer. And you're itchy. Why are you itchy? You've had your flea stuff. I don't know. I'm old. Old and itchy like you. Yep, she and I are alike. I was having trouble finding wasps dropping on my head. I woke up this morning over my headboard of my bed and this is what I found. I sprayed it. Most of them I think have died. Happy Halloween. Oh, that was my head. Oh, creepy. Oh, to show you something interesting that grew on an old oak stump in the back of my yard. And uh, I think some of you are going to identify this for me, although my friend Maggie says she thinks this is a chicken of the woods. Look at that. This thing is huge. <laughs> and I don't eat mushrooms. That's a shame. I mean, I kind of have been known to, but not ones I pick. But that is just the most beautiful mushroom, and it is monstrously huge. It is almost the size of that swimming pool that had onions. <laughs> Can you see the comparison? This is quite the beauty, and I'm going to leave it and let it grow and live a good life. Mom's mom here. There's Sadie. She says, I'm a camera hog. I am photobombing the camera. <laughs> Scud's usually the one doing that. He's usually my photo bomber.